Today, let's take a look at how the AI in my turn-based roguelike Unto Deepest Steps works. You can view the original devlog linked below to get into the weeds of the game systems, but as a quick refresher, each unit must move and attack each turn, and in order to make things a bit more chess-like, each unit must follow certain rules and patterns for doing so that are unique to them. The archer, for instance, can only move diagonally and only attack cardinally, firing as far as its maximum range allows or stopping early if it hits something. The mage, on the other hand, has limited movement and a single attack choice, but will attack a pattern of cells all around it, allowing for it to attack multiple units at once if the attack is lined up correctly. Units maintain a list of all possible actions, and when it's time for them to act, whether via player input or as part of an AI decision, that unit will iterate over this list and determine which options are valid given the current game state. The valid options will then be presented either as choices on the map, if the unit is controlled by the player, or will be fed to the AI controller, which decides what actions should be taken by the opponent team. The AI controller is a component that is attached to non-player controlled units at the start of battle. It's responsible for determining what that unit should do given the current game state. At a high level, this component simply looks at what actions are valid, scores them based on desired outcomes, and then picks the highest scoring action. If you've seen my video on utility AI, then scoring actions may sound familiar, though this implementation is a pretty simple take on that concept since units are so limited in what they can do each turn. At the top of the controller are a list of fixed values for scoring how useful a potential action is at this point in time. Looking at them, we can see there is a clear hierarchy of preferences that are quite conventional and expected with basic AI-controlled units. Anything that harms the opposing team is good, with a preference towards hurting stronger units, while anything that hurts your own team is bad. As units must move and then attack in Unto Deepest Steps, the AI controller has a limited set of decisions to make. What cell should I move to, and what cell should I attack after I move? As the possible combinations are quite small, the decision making is just brute forced in the game and follows the flow of grab the current game state, grab the list of valid moves, and then for each movement option, score movement based on how much it moves the unit towards its opponents, grab the list of valid actions from that location, score each potential action based on its impact and the point values I've already shown, sum and store the scores of moving and attacking, and then pick the highest scoring move and attack pair. And that's it as far as determining what an AI should do on its turn. Simply iterate over all possible move and attack permutations and pick the pairing that will have the biggest impact towards achieving its goal. In the original demo of the game, that's all there was to it, but this quickly revealed some problematic gaps in execution, as units don't exist in a vacuum. They're part of a team that is working towards the same goal, and having each unit act independently of the others, while perhaps making some sort of thematic sense when fighting against the undead, resulted in turns from the AI-controlled team that were sometimes so bad as to be unsatisfying to play against. For example, it was not uncommon that the player would find one of their units in a bad spot, due for a loss, and then not have that loss happen because the AI units acted in the wrong order, blocking each other from taking optimal actions. And when that happens with any amount of regularity, which it did, what's the point of playing the game? After all, strategy games are meant to mentally engage and test you, to have you design and execute a plan that will allow you to outmaneuver and defeat your enemies, or to develop and learn new strategies if what you tried didn't work. If the AI can't form any semblance of its own strategy for you to overcome, then there's little reason to play the game. So that's when I decided I needed to implement planning at the team level. Similar to individual units, unit groups can have a unit group AI component attached to them that lets them coordinate turn planning across units. This component operates very similarly to the AI controller in that it scores potential options, but it operates at a higher level. It creates permutations of potential turn orders, and then for each permutation, creates a snapshot of the current game state and iterates over the units, letting each one determine the best possible move and attack pair according to the game state snapshot and the rules within the AI controller, and then modifying that snapshot of the game state to account for what the unit chose to do so that future units will have correct information. It then sums the score of each unit's choices up to a permutation level score, and picks the permutation with the highest overall score to execute. Pretty straightforward, but there are a few gaichas to this. For one, I have to be careful generating turn order permutations, as each additional unit on a team increases the number of potential turn orders by a lot. 
This game is too small and fast paced to make the player sit and wait while I calculate hundreds or even thousands of potential turn orders. And the scale grows so fast that I'd quickly hit a wall where it's not possible to wait for a result anyways. So I had to come up with a compromise that is fast, but good enough. For smaller teams with only a few units, I do calculate all potential turn orders and score them, meaning that the best possible decisions can be made. But for larger teams where that's infeasible, I randomly shuffle the turn order for each permutation and go with that. While this means that larger teams aren't necessarily acting perfectly optimal, the number of outright bad decisions drops dramatically and the desired outcome of better coordinated AI is still obtained. I do also plan to look at some potential heuristics to help guide the random sampling process further, but that's lower priority for now. There's also a performance concern when running so many AI calculations back to back. The AI is written in GDScript, which is good enough for most operations, but does seem to struggle with more data-heavy uses. And while an individual AI calculation is more than fast enough, processing and scoring all of these potential turn orders does add up enough that the AI can't calculate everything it needs to in a single frame. As I don't intend to rewrite any of this in C-sharp because I have more important things to do on the game, I instead use a frame budget to keep the game responsive and performant. If you're unfamiliar with how frame budgeting works, you track how long an operation, or set of operations, takes and when the allotted time for it to run has elapsed, you pause its execution and wait one frame before continuing that operation. In the case of unit group planning, that just means checking how much time has elapsed after each call to an individual unit's AI controller. This keeps the UI responsive and the graphics smooth, all while doing plenty of calculations in the background. Typically, it only takes a few frames to calculate what the AI will do, which is fast enough that you really won't ever notice that the game is technically somewhat softlocked while it's running. Sometimes though, it can run just long enough to be noticeable, so I will be continuing to optimize where it makes sense to do so, and informing the user when planning is taking a little longer than expected. Some of you may also be wondering about running these calculations in parallel, as while each unit relies on the actions of the previous one to update the game state, each permutation can be calculated entirely independently of the others. The short answer is that I have looked into it, but some of the data, such as the navigation data, is not thread friendly, and to make it so would be more work than it's probably really worth at this point considering what I have already works and can be potentially optimized further if needed. And that's a look at unit AI in Unto Deepest Depths. To sum it up, individual units look at the current game state and test all possible move and attack combos to see which is most effective. At the unit group level, these scores are calculated for various possible turn order combinations and the most effective turn order is chosen. This results in an effective but performant AI that ups the challenge from the original demo release. I will continue to iterate on it, but things are moving in the right direction.